Any advice? Having a daughter? Any advice? Oh, no, not really. Just love them. Just, yeah. I mean, they, they are who they are. Yeah. Family. Yeah. It's family. Can't give up on them. Never. I mean, what else is there? If you were to scour the internet, I don't think that you'd find many people who would say that Breaking Bad's second season is their favorite. Rankings for the series tend to be dominated by seasons 4 and 5 at or near the top, and with good reason. They're masterful, and they're my top two seasons as well. But even in spite of that, there is something about the feel and essence of Breaking Bad's second season that makes it incredibly unique. And despite it not being my absolute favorite, I would argue that it's the one with the most distinct identity. It's the one that taps into something extremely abstract, and it's the one that I find to be the most interesting to reflect on when it comes to intent, structure, and presentation. Of course, there are a lot of things unrelated to that that Season 2 does well too. Throughout its events, it permanently shifts the tone of Breaking Bad into something much more dramatic and sinister. It also introduces a multitude of characters that would become essential to the story, and it chronicles events that end up being formative for Walt, Jesse, and Hank. It carries out a lot of functions, and it does this really well. But when I think of Season 2, the first thing that comes to mind is the eccentric, artistic approach that it has to the overarching plot, the direction, and how events unfold. While the story of Season 2 directly picks up after where it left off abruptly due to the writer's strike, it begins with a strange cold open depicting the aftermath of some sort of event, underlined by the now iconic pink teddy bear with the missing eye. These cold opens continue with three more scattered throughout the season, as it becomes more and more clear that some sort of disaster has occurred with Walt being at the center of it, and with the episode titles that encapsulate these scenes spelling out the nature of the event that we now know they were referring to. 737 down over ABQ. I'm not trying to portray this as some sort of masterstroke of storytelling in and of itself, but it undoubtedly lends an effective hook to the season as we try to piece things together. And the strange, experimental nature of the cold opens along with the deeply odd and ominous tone they provide immediately establish this foreboding atmosphere that pervades the season. Even if you aren't keeping an eye out for clues throughout the episodes that may hint at what happens, Season 2 just draws you in with this feeling of uneasiness. And due to the directorial style of the cold opens, it's an uneasiness that feels a bit more off and alien than usual. I can't stress enough that this feel is exclusive to Season 2. There are foreshadowing cold opens both before and after this season, but none of them approach them like this. None of them conclude in quite this way as the black and white fades into color and the puzzle fits together, almost making these 13 episodes feel like a complete story in and of themselves and making the season as a whole feel distinct and separate in a way. The season covers pulsating thrills, down-to-earth misery, off-the-wall hijinks, and more, but overlying all of it is this very subtle but very palpable tone. Things just feel weird and unusual thanks solely to these cold opens. But obviously, that alone isn't enough to achieve what I'm referring to, and the show takes this off-kilter feeling it establishes and runs with it through some of the primary themes that it covers as it carries out its climax and conclusion. Once I tried to calculate them, but they're astronomical. I mean, think of the odds of me going and sitting down that night in that bar next to that man. The universe is random. It's, it's not inevitable. It's simple chaos. It's, it's subatomic particles and endless, endless collision. That's what science teaches us. What is this saying? What is it telling us when on the very night that this man's daughter dies, it's me who's having a drink with him? How can that be random? 
The events that occur here as Walt stops and has a drink with the man who gives him advice about parenting, whose daughter he then chooses to allow die, is unbelievable enough to speak for itself, and that coincidence alone lends an almost cosmic, fatalistic element to the show that we really never see again. But it's what these events and their endpoints do thematically and tonally that always sticks with me and integrate with that established feel to give season 2 this impact. Walt's decision here ends up having longer reaching ramifications than he could have ever realized, as it causes Jane's father, Donald, an air control officer, to lose focus due to grief and cause a plane crash that tragically kills hundreds. This isn't quite a poetic, karmic retribution because to Walt this just ends up being a minor to moderate inconvenience that's even played for some very dark humor later on. But the astronomical odds of what happened here occurring just elevates these events in a way that almost feels supernatural. It almost feels fated, and it also plays into this idea of Sonder in a twisted, morbid way. The concept that any given, random passerby is living a life as vivid and complex as our own, and the feelings of immense scale to the world and paradoxical insignificance to ourselves that can spring from that. Before Walt made such a monumental and dark choice, fate would have it that he would talk to the man whose life he would irreparably damage. To Walt, he was just a kindly father in a bar with some sage advice, but to us, he was a three-dimensional character with a fully fleshed out life that indirectly coalesced with Walt, and neither had any idea that the topic of conversation, Walt's quote-unquote nephew and Donald's daughter, was about two kids that both of them knew quite well, who happened to be on the fast track to disaster. It's just an unbelievable moment, as time seems to stop for this conversation in the bar, with the music, the tone, and everything lending us this strange sense of calm. It almost feels in this conversation like everything is going to be okay. It's almost therapeutic, and Walt gets some clarity and Donald is able to talk about what's clearly been ailing him. But as we know, that sense of calm ended up being twisted and cruel for how much of a false horizon it was, because we know exactly what occurs directly after this. We are so small, and the world is so much grander than we can conceptualize, but sometimes the most unbelievable coincidences happen, and sometimes the actions we choose matter and have immense scale that impacts everything around us. This whole scenario adds this cosmic and abstract element to a story that otherwise feels very grounded, and as a piece of the narrative, it plays directly into the evolution of Walt, as he would continue to make these choices for himself that would have consequences longer reaching than he could ever imagine burning down his family, those he cares about, and eventually, his empire and himself with it. Oh, that, that was the moment. That night, I should never have left home. Never gone to your house. Well, maybe things would have... I was at home watching TV. There's some... A nature program about elephants. And Skylar and Holly were in another room. I could hear them on the baby monitor. She was singing a lullaby. Oh, if I had just lived right up to that moment, and not one second more. That would have been perfect. Walt can be very tunnel visioned at times, but he is capable of immense self awareness on occasion, and he applies that here. This, before he made the decision to go out and infect Jesse and Jane with drug money, before he talked with Donald, and most importantly, before he let Jane die. This was the perfect time to die. Before Walt became a true monster, before he did things that in his eyes he could never take back and started on a path that there was no return from. And it's like the universe acknowledges this as the time through how this season and this moment are presented as some sort of abstract anomaly. As I'm sure you've gathered by my use of clips in this video, I'm a big fan of how Season 3's Fly dwells on these ideas too. Fly almost seems like a capstone and epilogue to Season 2. It captures that same feel through how Walt muses upon all of this and in great detail reminisces and ruminates on what occurred. And I think that with the context of Fly, we can understand why such emphasis is put on making Season 2, and most importantly the climax of Season 2, feel so different. 
There are many debates about when Walter became Heisenberg, and I've talked in the past about why I think those debates are fundamentally flawed so I won't harp on that here, but what's key is that Walter himself seems to believe that him letting Jane die was the moment of no return. His immense apology, how he can't stop fixating on it, how he thinks it would be the perfect time for his life to end, where he had the money but hadn't let things go too far. This was the moment for Walt in his eyes. And as such, the show portrays it through this unbelievable series of events and the odd tone scattered throughout season 2. Almost like the universe stood still here, as things led up to this, the moment that was to be the beginning of the end. Of course, one could easily argue that we would have reached a scenario like this regardless after the diagnosis. But while that was a monumental life-changing event that happened to Walt, this was a monumental life-changing choice that he made. And from Walt's perspective, it was where things truly began ramping up. And that's why Season 2 has this ominous and melancholic tone throughout. It is where things truly became inevitable from the perspective of the monster himself, where the center of this universe was conceived. And so of course it almost feels like it exists in a vacuum. The rest of the series was just following what was always going to happen after he reached this point. Simultaneously intimate and grand in scale, as strange as it is pivotal, Breaking Bad tapped into something with Season 2 that I don't think was ever replicated in the series. And so while it may not be the best season, at least not in my eyes, it's one that I can't help but revisit and ruminate on because of how unbelievably different it feels and how haunting and unforgettable it is. Many thanks for watching.